the clubbing, he was all tangled and so he was really distressed as well. It was pretty horrific. There was a lot of panic in both of the people's eyes at that stage. Someone's getting pulled out of the water. In front of the jet stream. Reports have come in that a lady has been dragged out of the water unconscious. I'm down the southern end of the beach in the Can-Am, and I've got to work my way through a really thick crowd along the shoreline. When you hear that come across the radio, so many things are going through your head. Are they breathing? Have they broken their neck? Lifeguards are desperate for information, but the woman can hardly speak. For me, it's a process of elimination and building up a case profile of the history that led up to the event. Hey, um, on the radio update, just taking in some water. The woman from Iran is accompanied by her sister. Does she have a condition? Yeah, she has arrhythmia. Heart arrhythmia is an irregular heartbeat, causing the heart to beat too slow or too fast. Then, new information is revealed. Peter. Yeah, so we might be treating it for a spinal. Yeah, so we're just trying to support her head. All right. She was in the recovery position, just conscious, eyes pretty much closed, very laboured breathing. The two sisters have recently migrated to Australia. She was from Iran, so we didn't understand what she was saying. We were lucky that her sister was there to interpret what she was actually saying. She might vomit. There you go. On by incident to central. What we call an ambo. He's taken a bit of water and potentially been hit by a surfboard, so could have knocked herself out. Copy. Why did she fend all of a sudden? She could have been knocked down. Yeah, from the blow. Could be a concussion. Oh my God. Lifeguards are still unsure. Did the woman lose consciousness due to her heart condition or from the surfboard hitting her head? Okay, so when, when did she blank out? No, 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 no. Yeah, she, she was okay, sort of, but like a minute after, she fainted. She fainted. Yeah, yeah. Get knocked out, maybe. Yeah, she could be a spawn. The lifeguards got notified that there was a lady being dragged out of the water. Looks like she'd been knocked out. She's conscious breathing but they're treating it as a suspected spinal. Finally, a man sheds light on the situation. So I was, I was in the sea and uh, I saw the, the woman. She, she started to doesn't feel well and she fell down in the water. So I just pulled her out and uh, tracked to the, to the beach. OK, so what I want you to ask her, and we'll get her to squeeze your hands, so we'll get her in this position. So we know you're okay, I'm here for you. Bring both arms around for a sweetheart. Squeeze nice and hard. Yeah, she's got strength there, yeah. The two women were swimming outside of the flags in an area where surfing is permitted. After stabilising the woman, lifeguards hand over to paramedics. Yeah. Do you have any pain at the moment anyway? I'm going to push down here. Does that feel the same, better or different as the front? Any pain down here? There's a, we have another crew coming down here as well, just to help us get her off the beach here. Okay. Further assessments will be conducted at hospital. Yeah, so this here is Gavin, so we're just going to roll when Gavin wants to do it. And whatnot, if everyone's happy with that. Let's make this off. One, two, three. The paramedics have taken her to hospital. I have my suspicions that it was just a concussion but I hope she's OK and it wasn't a suspected spinal. I'll, I'll go for this little girl, eh? One woman is barely standing, but Chapo passes her to reach two other people farther out. The pair from Korea would be difficult to bring in at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jackson holds firm in the buggy. As much as he probably probably does need a hand, we've we got to keep a few of us on the beach here because if something was to happen down south, 
then there's, you know, then there's just no one here. You've got to be careful with taking too many, too many of us off the beach because you can get caught out and um, there's two over here. Jackson notices two more people in a separate rip, but must collect another rescue board. Yeah, there's two in that park and they're sitting on. Yeah, mate, there's got the chapo, it looks like he's heading over. Is he heading over? I don't think he's got the message. Yeah, go, go, go. Chapo offloads the two young Koreans in shallow water. They were right on the shore and I... Look, I just thought they'd be fine. But seconds later, and the pair have walked back into the deep water of the rip. They weren't fine, so I had to go get them a bit closer to shore, and that took more time. The situation stops Chapo from getting to the two other people farther out. Oh, well, I had to go and make another rescue because I could hear these two big guys drowning behind me, screaming. Struggling to understand Chapo's instruction, the pair think he is asking them to get back on the board. I just thought they'd let go. Seeing the situation, Mario arrives from the north end. I pulled up. I jump on. Uh, Mario, they're both going for it. As we're getting closer, a surfer got these two people. Thank you, Lali. Tells you they were going under, you know, so quick. One of you come here. I could see that they were in big trouble and I wasn't surprised they were completely exhausted. I was paddling the guy in and he was so scared that he crossed into our feet. He thought he was, he was dying. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, brother, this is not a swimming pool. Just be careful, all right? Yeah. Neither of the men were prepared for the strength of the rip. I thought it was like joke or beginning, but end of that, I found that I don't know, like it was not joke, funny something. At risk of being overwhelmed by inexperienced swimmers, lifeguards break out the big guns. So the jet ski on a day like this is fantastic. It really keeps all lifeguards on the beach. The jet ski then does all the rescues. As rare, then a board has to go in. Within minutes of launching, Jake is called to action. There's about just, oh, 30 people in that rip out the back of the slides. All right, everyone, go in, please. Help us out. Look how many people we got here. We don't need you all out here. If you can't swim, please go back to shore. Thank you. I think I was in the water for about 20 or 30 seconds before I was like picking up swimmers off the back of the flags. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just seconds earlier, these swimmers were standing in shallow water. They were just getting pulled off the back of the sandbag and they all just sort of clambered on. It's got five. Keep it all, keep it all, keep it all, keep it all. Hold on to me, all right? Yeah, hold on to me. About four more hands just went up on you guys yesterday. Four swimmers hang off the ski. Go, get off. Out the back, more are in trouble. Sensing a potentially disastrous situation, Hoppo moves to a cover position. There's like 30 people playing there. Let's do some mass rescue. Cool, cool, yeah. Then at the north end, lifeguards spot a woman struggling in a rip. Oh, yeah, she's starting to panic a bit. This one sort of caught us off guard, and when we put our eyes on the rip that she was in, she was going under, and it was one of those moments where you're like, where's the lifeguards? Everyone's pretty far away, and, and she's in the ice straits. Loaded with swimmers, Jake can't leave his position. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got, we got the, there. There. the boys have spotted a, a woman in the rip, and she's really struggling. The situation has also caught the attention of volunteer lifesavers. I'm in, mate. He's going to go. 
we're like, come on, mate, put some big paddles in because this chick, seriously, she's going down. Oh my God. Oh my God, oh. She, that person is so drowning right now. There's two of them. Oh, Just when we thought we couldn't get any worse, there's two more heads in the same rip and they weren't looking good either. Oh my God. Where did that even come from? So we've got three people now needing help. We've got one jet ski in the water and lifeguards scattered everywhere. Oh, she went under. Oh my God. Go, mate. From the tower, it's one of the scariest things as a lifeguard because you're watching someone drown and it goes in slow motion the time the buggy's getting to that person and you're literally sitting there helpless watching them sink. Oh my God. By the time Hopper was radioed to go in and he was paddling out, I'd seen it from there. You just got to get there as quick as possible. On the way out, a good Samaritan is helping one of the struggling men. He desperately calls for Hoppo to help his friend further out. Get his head! Get his head some food! So when I got to the guy, it was choppy conditions. He was panicking, but his concern wasn't about himself. It was more about the other woman. At the back of the rip, a young surfer and a volunteer lifesaver have saved the woman's life. That kid just saved that chick's life. Jake arrives for the pickup. All right, Jake's there. Yeah. Hoppo collects the man. We've got her, we've got her. Yeah, we've got her, we've got her, get on. She wasn't the best swimmer and she'd been sort of fighting that rib. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She wasn't in a good way. She was a bit, bit distressed when I got to her. Jump on the mat, jump on the mat. Yeah. Even once all the resources arrive and you think the scenario is over, someone who's been fighting a rip for a minute that can't really swim, they've they're completely fatigued and there could be a rescue board right in front of them and they just can't grab it. So all of a sudden the rescue's not over. Hold on, hold on. So that's it. Holy shit. Got it, as... Yeah, jump off, jump off, jump off. Saving someone's life, wrangling a jet ski and, and, and managing that all at once, that hats off to him, he, he's done a great job. You can even hear the panic on Hop's face. Yeah, yep, I'm in. Yeah, I've never heard Hop panic. I've never yeah. heard Hop panic. That was one of the first times I've heard Hop over. Just wig it. Yeah, I'm in. Once you hear Hop start wigging out, start stressing and, and even running, that's when you know it's serious. Hey, guys. It's very dangerous today. Please move north into the middle of the running yard flags for us, please. A storm in the Tasman Sea has whipped up a powerful swell. Yeah, it's just taken a large group out of the flags and put them in a bit of a hole. Will and Joel support rookie Noah. Yeah, guys, gently out there. Just keep moving in. Don't come across. Come straight back to shore, please. Undeterred by the stormy conditions, the swimmers have little idea just how treacherous Bondi is today. Yeah, I can see a, um, a situation that's becoming pretty dangerous pretty quickly. For an adult out there, they're generally OK because it's only sort of waist at water, but there's a bunch of schoolgirls down there. The water's, like, rapid, so... It's gone from being relatively safe and OK to a bit of a situation on our hands. Several people are now in trouble, but there are just three lifeguards on hand. I think someone needs to go there, guys. She's got her hand up. Yeah, go ahead. Originally, I thought I was just driving down to be an extra set of eyes of the flags, and all of a sudden, I've, I've got a mass rescue on my hands. Will uses the megaphone to direct swimmers away from the rim. Girls out the back, walk towards the flags, please. Yet more people are being pulled from the shore by the rip, but Joel focuses on a mum cradling her young son. You all right? <laughs> he's managed to get the mother and her son on board who are frantically panicking. You can tell they just want to get in there, but he's had to then keep them on the board and try and get the two others who are in distress. Go out that one, out the back. Just go. go. As Noah backs up, one of the exhausted girls fights her way onto the board, leaving her friend out of reach. I was really struggling to drag my way across to this girl and just try and grab her hand so I could pull her over. But she's just getting smashed by these waves in the back and they keep pushing her under and she did disappear for a second and I was, I was really worried. It was such a relief, get a visual on the patient. Finally, Joel has everyone on his board. I've got four people on my board. I've just got to do my best just to try and fight this rip and get across to that sandbank. If one of these girls came off, we were right in this rip and they'd just be gone. 
getting the four back to, to shore against that rip is difficult. Luckily, Joel's got the strength to do it. Once we got there, it was, um, it was a really good feeling and they were all really, really relieved to be back on the sand. Hats off to Joel for that one. That was impressive. Max thinks he's seen something in the water. But then it's gone. I was looking at the flag and I was wondering, is there actually a person behind there? Whatever's there is obscured from view by the flag. The flag is in the middle. 500 metres to the north, Chapo has a clear view. And then all of a sudden, the guy popped out from behind the flag, and I was like, wow, we really need to get this guy. It's unclear how long the man has been struggling against the rip. The man bounces off the bottom. He's up here. Coming back up, way on the oh, horizon. As precious seconds tick away, the man barely has enough energy to keep his head up. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got him. But that's when I'd noticed that closer in, there was another guy who was just in the same amount of trouble. Another man has drifted into exactly the same spot. But from the tower, he's also hidden by the flag. Mario is unaware Harrison has a double rescue on his hands and needs backup. I turned the board around and I tried to catch a wave in, but on the angle, so I could pass him and, and collect him on the way through. In my head, it, I thought it would go to plan. It didn't go to plan. Chapo races to back up from the other end of the beach. To me, they look like they're in a lot of trouble. Chapo and someone else. Overshooting the second patient poses a new dilemma to Harrison. Who to help next? I told the first guy to just don't let go. Really dangerous to go out and try and rescue someone with no equipment because they're going to see you afloat and they're just going to jump all over you. They don't care if they take you down with them. Chapo battles the waves. In a panic, the man pushes Harrison underwater. In that situation, Harrison was well in control of what he was doing. He just needed my help to do it more effectively. We go, we go, man. Man. Veteran lifeguard Chapo is joined by first year lifeguard Sam. They were panicking, trying to get in, unable to get in. That's just like fighting. Go for the right-hand side. I'll go to the left-hand side, OK? Where's the board? With only one board on the buggy, Chapo must drop Sam off. You go first, I'll go get a board. Then go for another board. A surfer sees the trouble unfolding. A surfer came along and floated one of the girls, so I thought, oh, thank goodness, she's out of trouble. Sam can get the other girl now. Yeah, that one girl's horrific. And Sam paddled past the girl in dire straits. Keep moving, you're almost there, keep... And went for the girl that was already being floated by the surfer. What are you doing? Even though she was being held up by a surfer, she was unresponsive. All right, if they're going to get her legs, on the floor, we're going to hold down first. She's taking on a lot of water, and yeah, I wasn't getting much response at all. Hey, you there? You there? 
100 metres up the beach, Chapo has collected a second rescue board. Sam's grab one girl butt. Quickly go. Yeah, I'm on my way. I've got good visual on right now. She's struggling. Just hold up. Yeah, she's got it. Good job. The woman must hang on for just a few seconds more. Hold on, sweetie. Hold up. Friends from Western Sydney, Claudia and Alicia are now with lifeguards. But their condition is poor. OK, we're going to have to break this boat. Lots of waves coming. She was not really moving at all. I just wanted to kind of keep her close and just keep telling her it's going to be OK. She had taken in a lot of water, so sort of the next five to ten minutes were just pretty critical. Uh, good. Okay, sweetie. What we're going to do is we're going to give you some oxygen. Put the oxygen mask on her and just try and keep her calm. Yeah, yeah good girl. Seem like you've come around all right. Uh, no, I don't think yeah, so either. I think the situation becomes clearer to Jules. That was um. Yeah, really well done. The fact that Sam went for the girl that was being floated by the surfer in the tower, that confused me, but Sam was right there and then, and he did the right thing. Yeah, yeah just these sort of in front of me here. Guys, just push back between those red and yellow flags for me, please. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh. Is it? A lifeless swimmer is being dragged from the water by members of the public. Straight away, I'm preparing for a recess. Just serve on this tank, Mum. I'll get it. I'll get it. Defibrillators are used to resuscitate people by sending an electrical charge to the heart. Where are they? By a bit unconscious, do you mean he is unconscious or he's just fading in and out? This guy had a bit of water coming out of his mouth. His eyes were closed and he was unconscious. Lifeguards quickly assessed the man to see if CPR is necessary. He did have a pulse and he was only just breathing by himself. So with the bag mask, we are giving him 100% oxygen. The man was pulled from the water between the flags. Can you bring that oxy back over? The flags are normally the safest part of the beach. Is there anything we should know about? No. How we like, didn't see this? What caused the man's near death experience? This is my whole crab dog, I didn't see. When the guy started coming around, we found out that he had actually got really bad cramp in his legs and he, and he just couldn't even swim. He just went under. Uh, Aka is from Western Sydney and was swimming with friends. We are out swimming about close to 100 metres out. He's got a leg cramp and just started panicking and had to pull him back in shore. Even in the flags, you know, which is up there with the safest swimming areas, you know, things do happen. I think Akka owes a lot to his mates for pulling him out that day. I think Akka was a lucky man. Spotting a man in the danger zone, Bagus tasks young Sam with the job. Big Sam is in here, boy. Okay, Bobby, where are you? Where are you going to the south corner? In the deep south. The deep south. Yeah, I gotcha. Hard to see from here. 
Yeah, go, boys. Ticket over 100 meters out to the man. Yeah, he's he's going out really well there, huh? Far out. The rescue. Getting back in it won't be so easy. And you're in a strong rip. You got rocks, big wall, big waves. So it's a tricky, tricky spot to do a rescue. Dutch tourist Stefan never expected this when he went for a swim at Bondi. Yeah, you can see it was dangerous. And for someone who's never been there, it's pretty scary. Get on the floor, get on the floor, get on. Suddenly, a huge set wave runs up. Within seconds, Sam and his patient are ricocheted from the deep water of the river into the shallow water alongside Bondi Iceberg's pool. Lie down. He's getting smashed by waves, I'm getting smashed by waves. We're getting nice and close to the rocks. I'm thinking, yeah, this is going to be a hairy one. The rip's kind of taking you away from the beach, closer to the rocks. So you have to make a decision whether to paddle out and around or a really long paddle back to the sand, or sometimes you have to take on the rocks and go up the rocks with the patient. Never before has a first year lifeguard chosen to go up the rocks. Going up the rocks, huh? Well, pretty much from the paddle out, I knew the rip was just insane. And I was either we paddle against the rip for 15 minutes, or we just take our chances, give it a go, and go straight up those rocks. And I thought, why not? Better now than never. The rocks kind of opened up, and we just slotted it straight in there. It was unreal. Yeah, that was good. He got out there quick. It's definitely not what I'd expect a young guy to do at all. Um, Any time you're dealing with rocks, it can be really dangerous if you don't have the right technique. Yeah. Marks out of 10. We're never going to give them a 10 straight up. We'll give him a 7. All right, mate. See you later. All good. Enjoy your day. Clint Kimmins has seven years lifeguarding experience on the Gold Coast but is in his first season at Australia's busiest beach. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's panicking. He's definitely no good. Trainee Berkey is also at the south end. He's on a rostered day off, but working as a buggy driver for the Bondi Rescue film crew. And even on my day off, I was still watching the water. I knew something was going to go on down here. It's just starting to open up now. That tide's really starting to drop. Suddenly, five more swimmers lose their footing on the sandbank. There's a few other there now. I'm going to go. Just one. Copy, mate. We'll keep eyes on you. Five or six more people just lost their feet and started to panic. Oi! Oi! Go in! Go in! There are now six swimmers in trouble and only one lifeguard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, central to Jethro. Backup is 800 metres away at the north end. Mate, there's a few more heads down there. It might even be worth just heading down that way, mate. Usually the horn's really useful to clear a path, but on this day, the, uh, the horn wasn't working. I was looking at other people in trouble thinking, geez, we need a few more lifeguards out here. Hey, buddy, oi, oi! Oi, swim, swim to me, swim to me. The man further in struggles to stay afloat. Trainee lifeguard Berkey is off duty and faced with a decision. Mate, that guy was probably drowning. I knew I had to go. As the rip intensifies, yet more swimmers are sucked out. Yeah, central to north Rhino. There's about five heads now, so. Worth going in when you get there. Okay, you got me. Don't go in. Jethro finally arrives with first year Bondi lifeguard Jack. Reedy, Berkey, and a volunteer lifesaver manage five patients. 
two more swimmers cling to a small bodyboard. Jack heads for the two swimmers who are waving. When Jules identifies yet another person in trouble. There's a chick close to shore who's like practically wait, 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 wait. You can't ignore when people are in distress. PA Jack and tell him to turn around and go for the chick into his right. She's the priority. There's now only one lifeguard left on the entire beach. By the time I grabbed the megaphone, Jack had gone past it. I just had to get in there. Jethro's going in. People drown in a minute. You think they're sweet and they just sink, so you can't really leave that up to chance. Escalated quickly. I've got a couple of his maybe in the south corner. I'd head down there, the clubbies are out there. Loaded with two people, the lifesaver is dangerously close to the reef. You've got a lot of swell pushing in there against the rocks, and obviously the rip runs around the back of the iceberg, so you kind of get trapped between rocks and waves, and it can be really tricky. Yeah, also, Harrison, just north of the club, he's just one rope. He might need a hand as well. Any delays could leave the volunteer lifesaver vulnerable to the reef. I have to prioritise who's drowning and who can keep themselves afloat for a bit longer. Reedy, where are you at, mate? Harrison's doing a rescue. I've got a clubby doing a double rescue behind the reef. Start heading down there. I went to the first guy who I thought was in more need of assistance. <laughs> and he told me he was OK. <laughs> Volunteer lifesaver is being pulled towards the reef. The clubby cannot even nearly get these three blokes in. But the man who claims to be okay is showing signs that he's far from it. Hubs can't get this bloke in. With one of the buggies out of action, Reedy has 200 metres to cover on foot. Do I have a second board down here? I can see one right down south. I think, right, um, yeah, there's still a south board down there. Clubby. that way? between patients. The club he had two patients. This other guy had no one with him. That's where I became un unstuck. Are you okay? He was in urgent need of help. So I knew I had to get him in as soon as I could because I need to go back out and grab these other guys. Managing two patients in tricky conditions has been gruelling work for the volunteer lifesaver. He would have been on that reef getting pounded by waves for at least 10 minutes now. Good, good. Come here, come here. Don't take the squad. The lifesaver is exhausted. But Harrison can only take one patient at a time. And that's when I look back and I notice Reedy's hurting out. After 20 minutes stuck in the south corner, he's short of breath. Oh, well, shut up, though. You always hear about people getting scared. I was like, ah, oh, it's nothing. Why are you actually out there? It's crazy. Myself and Harrison are in the Can Am on the, on the water's edge. Central to South Buggy Boys. Just do us a favour and come up just in front of the tower. Beep. Unfortunately, we're, we're down a board rack. So, with no rescue equipment. Earlier in the day, the rack on the buggy, which normally carries a rescue board, broke. Be reminded you a little bit quicker. When you're driving to a rescue, you kind of rely on the tower to let you know how severe or how urgent you should get there. Helpless to assist, the man's friend 
waves for a lifeguard. Yeah, definitely keep coming in and going in. Beardy reaches for a device which belongs to a much earlier era. Even though he wasn't too far from the beach, he was, he was struggling. That's what happens. They can't put their feet on the ground, they start to panic, and a few waves come past their head, and, and they think they're going to drown. I actually tripped over. I thought I was going to headbutt the sand. I knew it was serious. I knew I had to get to him. Panic swimmers can pull their rescuers under. Beardy leads with the rescue ship. Yeah, some of the boys that had only kind of here in the modern era, I'd say, like, is they wouldn't have done many tube rescues on Bondi. This is the first time I've ever seen a tube rescue at Bondi. Mate, this will be uh, hundreds of years' time. Lifeguards at Bondi look back in this moment, go, that guy, Daniel McLaughlin, Beardy, he rescued a guy at the tube. Felipe from Chile was standing on a sandbank when he was washed into deeper water. I found it hilarious. And I think when he saw me come out to get him, he was laughing at me too. Look at him. It's... <laughs> wow. It was actually pretty funny. I'm watching from north. I love a tube rescue. Mate, he's, he's nailed it. He's done well. The rescue may have been minor, but it's a momentous one for Beardy. The rescue buoy or tube was was probably came to fame in, in David Hasselhoff's hands, the Hoff. If the Hoff wants to copy me on the air guitar, I'll let him. Probably the worst situation of their life. They're screaming at you in other languages, you don't know what they're saying, they think they're gonna die and when they're back on terra firma, I suppose, they're uh, pretty happy. Yeah, my see you. That's all right. It's good to get a thank you here and now. Some people are embarrassed and walk away, and that's fine, but when they come and say thanks, it's pretty humbling. Send for a little to see how far I'm at. Go ahead. Mate, you just got a little flash going on in your towel. Our heads are just starting to uh, move out to sleep. We noticed there's two guys making an effort to get past the shore break. They don't really want to get hit by it, so they swim just beyond it, and Chapo's on the megaphone pulling everyone out of the water. There's a massive crowd. Hey, everyone in this area, come back to shore. He just has no idea of uh, his predicament at this stage. Yeah, coffee, mate. It's too dangerous. Waves make it hard for lifeguards on the sand to see how many patients need help. At that point, I only saw one guy, really, that I thought I was going to have to go for. I would say it's more than likely that you're going to have to go at some stage. I know how quickly the water's moving, that I have to go. Go, Bertie. He needs some help. I have to jump in, run through, wait for a few waves on the shore break so I can get a clean run to get out to this guy. We must have been paddling out 100, 150 metres off the beach. Come on, mate, get out there. Lifeguards hope the swimmers aren't hit by a large wave before they reach them. These two men are out of luck. Oh, we've got two. Yeah, we've got a second person waving for help. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, this is bad. When the surf's up and we've got a busy beach, you know, you kind of want your mate to come out and, and back you up. We must have been 100, 150 metres off the beach. Hey, come on, hold the board. And when I get there, there's two guys, and I'm like, whoa, I didn't even know there was two of them, because I couldn't see from paddling out. It's really not good. Had to throw them both on the board, thinking to myself, we get cleaned up by a sand, I'm going to lose one of these guys for sure. Maybe both of them, maybe the board, but... Turn around and Chapo's right there, which was pretty big relief for me. The patients are both students from Colombia. The danger may be over from there, but the flash rip has more havoc up its sleeve. Oh, I've got another couple of people in trouble too. A third person struggles 100 metres from shore. Oh, wow. This is a situation you don't want. Hey, 
I called a couple of local surfers over. Yeah, it's good. We've got, we've got help from the public going on down there. A volunteer surf lifesaver backs up. The tragedy has been averted. I haven't done any rescues. We have 10 footers breaking on my head, so it was definitely a day where I was going to have to prove my worth. Yeah, is this bike in front? Hey, buddy, come straight back for sure. If you grow me long enough down here to rip, come straight back. Tommy does everything he can to direct the man and avoid a rescue situation. Stop going sideways into the rip, jeez. But his warnings go unheeded. This guy's trying to die. What can go wrong if it's that big is so much more than normally. Like, days this big, like, I could die. In the brief moments Tommy takes to paddle out, the man is sucked out towards the huge swell. So, yeah, I was very stern on get on the board and let's go. We've got to get out of here. They've got the tongue get to go on the board. He's going to get sucked back out. So the north rip, when the waves are, you know, over eight feet, it starts to pull. It's like a river mouth that she's, it's full on. The rip charges out to sea at five metres per second. Double the speed of an Olympic swimmer. I just got to get across to the sandbank and get washed in as fast as possible. I don't want to be playing around in the rip, getting taken out. Look how fast he's going back out to sea. Venture to the he's going backwards pretty quick, didn't he, Tommy? <laughs> Tommy has three options. Paddle south and try to catch a wave in the impact zone. Go north up the rocks or aim straight at the beach and use brute strength against the rip. The lifeguard has their own way of doing things. I'm going to do the rescue different to what Tommy's going to do. I'm not going to try and paddle against the rip because you're just going to get sucked further and further out. Before long, the rip will pull Tommy and the man out into open water and into the full might of the impact zone. Just avoid sitting in the impact zone was... That was plan A. Plan B was... Yeah. No, I didn't really have one, actually. Let's go straight across, mate. Finally, Tommy paddles away from the centre of the rip to the edge of the impact zone. This should be right now. Eventually, we got a little wave all the way up the beach, so pretty happy with that as a success. So hats off to Tommy. It was most probably the hardest way to get the patient in, but he got the job done. We were just about to walk out the door, and I just spotted these two girls. These two younger girls, just in that little rift. Yeah, Mike just get down just really quickly. Oh, they're so young, they're so helpless. In time critical rescues, the lifeguard in the passenger seat goes first. Yeah, yeah. she's putting her hand up. Yeah, boy, his hand's gone up. But Jethro is only just returning to full duties after a dislocated shoulder. Since returning to work from my shoulder, it was the first time I've been in the buggy going flat stick, going, going to a rescue where you know that it's life or death. Both hands up. I cleared that area out before I came off about 10 minutes ago. Go, go, go. There was a thought in the back of my head that, like, this is the first time you're going to paddle real hard. Go, go, go. These two girls weighs on Jethro's shoulders. I could see that they were youngish girls and the fear was in their eyes. They're both like crying, eh? They're little, they should have. I don't know where their mum or someone is. They were screaming for help when I was paddling out, so I, you just gotta go. You gotta go hard. They might not make it in. from lifeguards because they're deaf. 
they looked at each other in a weird way as if like to acknowledge what was going on and they worked together as a team and yeah, never seen anything like it. The young girls are sisters. On shore, Harrison looks for their parents. If I could hear the screams 50 metres away on the beach, surely the parents could hear the screams. Is that the mum on the shore in the black shirt? The grandmother, she's dead. The grandmother has been trying to signal the girls for the last 10 minutes. She was on the water's edge helpless. She couldn't let anyone know that her kids are in trouble. She couldn't run up to us, you know. She just started doing sign language to me and I felt my heart sunk a bit, actually. swimmer that we've already told get out of the area that you're not competent he needs rescuing nothing worse for frustrated lifeguards yet another dangerous rescue in rough conditions a clip wire wave out of grommet surfing to me I've got out to him and Pat one of the local boys was out there giving him a hand They got pushed into me. The bloke came out laughing and I just... Smile off your face, eh? <laughs> your patience just gets cut pretty quickly with stuff like that when people don't listen. The man appears unaware of the danger he was in. It's not a wrong wave. Smile off your face. I told you down there, you couldn't swim. Yeah. You mate, no, 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 hey. I was talking. I said, go to the flags. All right? I've got this one on the middle of the flag. That's why I'm talking. Mate, there's no flags around. All right, you've got to look. Yeah, yeah. All right? It's really dangerous. Yeah. Thank you. It is easy to get frustrated. I think that's one of my biggest faults is I get frustrated quite easy with people not listening. And I know that they, they probably don't know. But um, in this case, I think just because everything went wrong from the get-go on that rescue, you know, a bloke came out laughing and I just, just thought that was the end of it. <laughs> a lone swimmer has been spotted several hundred metres from shore near the shark nets. Max is in his first year at Bondi. Being that far out, if you're not a strong swimmer, there's no way to get back to shore. Volunteer lifesavers have an inflatable rescue boat already in the water. Cause it's the IV in the water, so we're just doing that. Yeah, that'd be great. With time critical, the IRB is directed to the man. I saw the IRB pick up the patient at probably about 100 metres before I got there, but I was still worried about the welfare of the patient especially being that, that far out to sea. So I decided I would signal the, um, the volunteers down and perform a welfare check on the patient out in the water. The IRB makes the rescue, but heading for shore, it stops. Hey! Hey! So the IRB had stopped moving and I'd sat off my board to have a look at what was going on and I was wondering if they had started performing uh, first aid or CPR on the patient. With the chop in the ocean that day, I actually couldn't see the patient in the IRB. When I saw the patient sit up and I saw he was conscious and breathing, it was a sigh of relief. The IRB has broken down, so the volunteers hand the patient over to Max. 18-year-old Alex is conscious but disoriented. Now. Max faces a half kilometre paddle back to shore.
After an exhausting one kilometre round trip, Max finally gets Alex back to the beach. When he walked out of the water, you could just see he was exhausted. He didn't look like he was in a good way. Just come up here and sit down with us. Let's take him up. I'm pretty concerned, eh? Hey? Like, he just seemed very confused and out of it. You all right, buddy? Yeah. Who'd you come down here with? No one. Just by yourself? Yeah. And how did you did you swim out there? Yeah. Why? So far from make it back. Okay. I'm gonna take the other yeah, as I grab the board and I'm running into the water, I'm just thinking to myself, like, I hope this guy can just stay afloat and hopefully I can get to him in time. The adrenaline's definitely pumping. I was definitely pretty nervous. Good job, man. I know there's gonna be eyes on me for my first rescue. There's there's gonna be a lot of people there watching, I, th I think. <laughs> oh, he's done it. Yeah, yeah, that's my first rescue at Bondi. Yeah, I'm back on shore with Chase, Jeffro, Skeeny, and they were all pretty stoked for me, I think. That's his first one, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, he spotted it too. He looked dying and dashed. He goes, I can't wait to tell my mum and dad. Yeah. Man, there was a moment. I've never said that at all. I'm going to tell mum and dad. I'm so proud. Can't wait to tell my mum and dad. They're going to be so proud. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> my mum was pretty happy with me. She was, she was proud. Proud moment. He's that close to mum. He gives her a call after a rescue. Then what a great family environment. God bless him. <laughs> Unreal. Tomorrow we'll do it again. Do it all again. By the time I got down there, uh, Clubby had already gone out. So he actually beat me to the patient, which was good because he kept the guy upright momentarily before I came out. The volunteer lifesaver has swum out with a rescue tube, a yellow flotation device with ropes attached. Tubes are really good first responders. They basically just keep the patient upright. It's very hard to complete a rescue with a tube and it's sort of just a temporary relief before the cavalry arrives. As the man scrambles onto the board, it becomes clear he's tangled in the rope connected to the rescue tube. That tube became a big hindrance because it was like a fishing net, all tangled around. The patient had it around his neck. It was actually making the situation worse. Worse still, the volunteer lifesaver is attached to the other end of the rope. The clubby, he was all tangled, and so he was really distressed as well. It was pretty horrific. There was a lot of panic in both the people's eyes at that stage. And then I noticed the blue board coming, and I think it's one of my colleagues, but I don't recognise him. An off-duty volunteer lifesaver has come to help using a spare lifeguard board from the beach. <laughs> the guy who swam out with the tubes getting rescued. Is this his dog or what? He was coughing up, he was vomiting water, and the tube was wrapped around his body. An exhausted patient tangled in ropes. This is not a textbook rescue. I want him on the board so I can untangle him with a bit more stability. He jumps on, shifts his weight. Gone, capsized. A capsized board normally spells more trouble, but this time, Bagus gets a lucky break. Believe it or not, capsizing's in our favour. He's untangled, miraculously. <laughs> I was about to drown. These guys are heroes. It wasn't deep at all. It just pulled me away, you know? I got really close to God. That was just one of those ones. He drowned for sure, 100%. The rescue victim may now be safe, but he's a little confused about who the camera crew are. He promised my family I'd be on the Bondi rescue. Same thing, yeah? I just wish I was asking that Bondi, bro. You guys be there tomorrow? Be here tomorrow? Nah, Bondi. Are we without for a great Bondi now? 
Yeah. And then it's Coronola. Yeah, this is what I made. Serious? Yeah, this is what I made. Thought he was in Cronulla. That's a 30 kilometer different train lines and everything. Like, that's a. <laughs> He's way off course. Are you supposed to be in Cronulla? Yeah, bro. Well. You okay, mate? Yeah, 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 thanks. So I thought my wife was bad with directions. That is like next level.